One of the long-standing questions in cosmology concerns the origin of the universe and whether it has always been approximately the same in all directions. This is what cosmologists call isotropic. After all, today, on the largest scale, the universe looks very similar in all directions, with approximately the same properties. But has it always been like this? What happened 13.8 billion years ago? And the answer is that something was happening. Of course, we don't know this for sure yet, but we already have a certain amount of knowledge about cosmology, gravity, and quantum mechanics in order to make models that have every chance of fixing at least part of the truth. And today we will talk about chaos, not on Earth, but in the universe. But how could chaos have created the universe? Let's try to delve into this question and find the answer. Interestingly, this is a rather old idea, dating back at least to the ancient philosopher Lucretia, who lived before our era and was already comprehended in the 18th century by the philosopher David Hume, as well as by the physicist Ludwig Boson in the 19th century. Moreover, even in Greek mythology, he believed that the universe arose out of chaos. In fact, the word chaos itself comes from the Greek word meaning abyss. This void, devoid of any features, is often represented as a kind of ocean, for example in Babylonian and Japanese mythologies. The same motif can be traced in ancient Egyptian, Polynesian myths and even in Mayan beliefs. This is quite interesting, because at that time, probably, people jumped through the fire in the skin of a deer, calling for rain. But nevertheless it is a fact. Yes, as we have seen, people of different eras had the idea that the early cosmos was a disorderly mixture, which was somehow ordered through time. Today, when science has gone far ahead, this ancient episode of the universe is called the Chaotic Cosmology Program. Well, to begin with, let's take a little look at what a disorderly mixture means, what does chaos mean in general? And for this we will give a simple and illustrative example with a pendulum. What happens to it when we set it in motion? Yes, it begins to oscillate, gradually decreasing the amplitude, and after a while the pendulum stops. Where did the energy of the pendulum go? That's right, she was taken away by tricky air molecules. But why doesn't the opposite happen? Why can't lazy molecules get together and give energy to the pendulum again? The answer is simple. The desire of the world for chaos is a fundamental property of nature. That is, the directional movement of the pendulum particles turns into a chaotic movement of air molecules. Just as the directional flow of water will sooner or later turn into a chaotic jet with turbulent vortices and intertwining streams. Physicists use a quantity called the entropy of a system to measure chaos. The greater the entropy, the less ordered the system is. In the state of equilibrium, entropy is maximal. Boltzmann in the 19th century proved a theorem that states that in a closed system entropy always increases with time. For example, let's take a helium balloon. Let's put it in the corner of the room. Then it bursts. The gas will spread throughout the room after a while, filling it evenly. Thus, the entropy of the gas increases to a maximum, and no matter how long we wait, the helium will never gather back into a sphere in the corner of the room. This indicates the irreversibility of processes in our world. Well, let's take a look at each ball separately. The fact is that for each ball we can find out the accuracy, its speed and coordinates, as well as the force acting on it. From Newton's second law, we can learn the acceleration and motion of each individual particle, and if we turn back time, the law will not change its shape. This means that the movement of each individual ball is also reversible. From the final state of the ball, you can understand where it came from and how it moves. But the movement of all the balls taken together turns out to be irreversible. French mathematician Andrin noticed an interesting thing about Umkara for a certain type of systems. As a result of the evolution of these systems, over time they returned to their original state, although initially it seemed that they were striving only towards chaos. Yes, indeed, the gas from the ball will not gather back into one pile, but what if we wait even longer? What if the Ankara cycle for such a system is very large, there are whole cosmological models based on the Ankara return hypothesis. 
One of them belongs to the famous mathematician Pin Rose. In his opinion, the universe first inflates, then collapses back, then explodes again, inflates and collapses again, repeating exactly the previous cycle. Statistical mechanics implies that, given sufficient time, systems close to equilibrium will spontaneously transition to a state with lower entropy. Locally reverses the thermodynamic arrow of time. It was Boltzmann who realized long ago that the second law of thermodynamics, which states that the entropy of a closed system never decreases, is not an absolute law. For clarity, let's imagine an ice cube in a glass of water that is completely isolated from the rest of the universe. Our thought experiment will last indefinitely. And by the way, you're Peter Pan and you ignore gravity. Traditional thermodynamics predicts that an ice cube will melt. And in a few minutes we will get a glass of colder water. We continue to wait for quite a long time, levitating over the cup. And now statistical mechanics predicts that the ice cube will eventually form again. If we saw such a miraculous phenomenon, we would come to the conclusion that the evolution in time of the process of reforming an ice cube would be with high probability approximately equivalent to the reversal of the process in time. Thus, we are observing a series of consecutive statistically unlikely events, rather than a single instantaneous very unlikely event. And now let's move this experiment to a larger scale. Let's imagine that you're willing to wait almost forever to see something like the Big Bang randomly oscillate in empty space. How will this actually happen? Based on the ice example, it won't be a sudden detonation in which nothing turns into a Big Bang. Rather, it will be exactly the same as the observed history of our universe, only reproduced in reverse order. It just so happens that there is nothing in the laws of physics that distinguishes a crazy story about fluctuations leading to a large compression, and a completely ordinary story, evolution from the Big Bang. One is the opposite of the other. And after all, the fundamental laws of physics do not determine the direction of time. Therefore, we may wonder whether such processes help explain the universe in which we actually live. Not really yet. And since we don't have enough time to experiment for a long time, such arguments are mostly in the field of philosophy. Or we need to look for other solutions and better understand how entropy works. Yes, today we can only measure the observable universe, but we cannot look beyond it. Consequently, the real universe on a larger scale may well be anisotropic, and its inhomogeneities have long been thrown out of the dimension due to spatial expansion. We know so little about space, probably only 2%. The universe is like a majestic castle stretching into the sky, with towers, bridges, thrones, halls, perhaps by his king and subjects. But, apparently, humanity has not emerged from the smallest dungeon of this fortress.